Caleb was born uh, two months prematurely. He was diagnosed at a, approximately a year as having CP, cerebral palsy. Nobody dreams of having a disabled child. You miss all the stuff that everybody takes for granted. He didn't roll over, he didn't crawl, he didn't walk. The first three and a half years, his basic therapy was uh, once a month he would be visited by occupational therapy, um, physiotherapy. For myself, for a single parent, it just wasn't enough. I put my right foot flat. One, where your voice is. Two, Two three, three, four, four five. five. Good, good try, and Amy, well done. And this is something that I've always told parents. The more you work with this child, the more the brain will reorganize. Good chance, higher. Higher, 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 keep it up. But the important thing is to teach the brain to try and find that detour. Jordan started the Movement Center uh, September of 2002 and he was only uh, three years old. I, I can't actually believe that uh, we're, how they've taken him this far. It's the walking, the standing, the reaching. Right off the hop, the first session, Gemma said, you know, Will should try to start drinking out of a straw. By the third week, um, he was drinking it from a straw out of a cup and that just opened a whole uh, range of eating and fine motor skills. We want all these challenged children to reach their best potential physically and mentally. Hold with your right hand and using your left hand. And conductive education will go a long way to achieving this. <laughs> there you go, now you're going. I thought I'd never be able to do things like getting dressed or going to the bathroom, stuff like that on my own. I thought it just wasn't possible, but they've shown me that there is a way. Okay, and I lift my hips up. Good, high as you can. Conductive education is a holistic educational approach to rehabilitation and to helping a, someone with a movement disability to overcome their, their difficulties. The program came from Hungary and it basically came across to North America barely 10 years ago, so it's really new here. It involves addressing this from a cognitive aspect instead of purely physical. You can't bend your leg, so I'll bend it for you. It's you can't bend your leg, so let's learn how to do that and let's teach you what you need to do to bend your leg. Four, five, Mobility is an issue for Ian because I can't physically lift him anymore. So through this program, he's been able to gain and maintain mobility, doing his own transfers, uh, keeping up the walking with his walker. Maybe we don't take in all the children thinking that they're going to learn to walk. Sometimes the goal is simply that they can communicate with them. You know, when you get families whose children are very severely disabled, that's a hundred times more important than their child learning to walk. It's just them being part of the family and being an active member of their, of their society. What we do here is it's hard work and it's six hours a day. Any high performance athlete knows you got to do drills, you got to do repetition to build your skills. Well, Joey, he, well, he has high expectations. <laughs> He's tough on me. Oh. Before you put it on. Last year, this one shoe, one of the shoes, it took 40 minutes, 40 minutes to put it on. And now it only takes me about 10 minutes to put the same shoe on. Are you ready? I walk with canes or one cane sometimes, and actually the day before yesterday I took my first truly independent steps ever. <laughs> and how did that feel? I, it was so amazing. I don't think I fully processed it yet. 
because even though it was only two or three steps, three will become six, and before you know it, I'll, it'll just be something that I can do. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. We run programs um, September till Christmas break. Then we resume again after New Year's and run until June. Come summer, we do something completely different. <coughs> we switch over to a Monday to Friday, and that's a boot camp situation. Uh, what we do in a four-week summer session can be a huge improvement. I like to work so hard I don't even breathe sometimes. When children, I'm sweating, and I'll be like, yay, <laughs> that's good saying, that's me working really hard, so. I'm so tired after, like, I want to I wanna, I wanna get out of here, like, I want to go home and sleep. The Movement Center is located at 1646 Henderson Highway. Five and a half years ago, Martin Bergen said, visualize a building here because that's what's going to be here for you. What a gift. Right below us is almost a full Olympic-sized swimming pool, and we control the temperature of this water. If you've got a child in this program, um, you can look at $10 an hour. If you are an adult in this program, it's 15 So this is the classroom. We are now able, because of this facility, because of the space, we have now been able to expand our programming. Two, three, up. Nice. We have a program now for people with MS. Well, I was diagnosed with MS when I was 14 years old, and I became uh, wheelchair-bound about four years ago. Probably within the first month, I noticed the difference. We have a program for stroke. Um, we have a program for people with head injury. We're working towards um, opening up again a program for people with Parkinson's disease. It doesn't uh, feel that I'm every fight, fighting everybody. You know, I I, I found a place that uh, yeah you can do it, and I said and that's what I want. You go anywhere else. And they say, no, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. I believe there's a place that can help me now. And I didn't have any place before. If we could even be less expensive, I know we'd be lined up out the door. Well, Chance had congenital heart disease, so he had to have what was called a routine cardiac pulmonary valve replacement. So we had to fly to Edmonton for the cardiac surgery. And uh, it was just supposed to be very routine and home by the weekend. Something went wrong and he was in a full coma and had stroked. We sat and waited for four weeks until he finally communicated with his tongue. Nobody, nobody in the government told us about this place. And just one of the mums mentioned it in passing that she goes to, to the movement center and within a few days we had our first goals since we had hit Manitoba. You know, it's like we're going to try and get him to sidestep three times. His brain is still healing and he still has a huge potential to, to recover. And by what was the second day, Gemma and Chance alone were walking down the hallway. Push and step. Just all he was doing was just pushing a piece of wood down the hallway and she was just helping his legs. It was amazing. Good. Your efforts are so valued here because every dollar we raise goes to client care and we truly appreciate anyone and anyone's time that they have to give us. We're a privately funded organization. Whatever financial help that can be given uh, will be give great rewards to families, to, to the parents and to the children. If one thinks about all the patients out there that don't walk normally or don't talk normally or can't eat normally, and if one widens that spectrum, there'll be a huge number of people that will potentially benefit from this. The Movement Centre makes it easy to choose them because of the quality of the people and the work that they do and the, um, 
the outcome, that you see people's lives change as a result of the work that they do. And so without it, I don't know where I would have been. Because right now we're seeing that spirit come back out again. I see that it made it worthwhile. Your whole heart opens up then that there's a possibility of a future for Jordan and the Movement Centre has given that to us. You feel good. Why? Because I walk you.